For my project on thermoregulation, I chose bearded dragons. These are lizards that are found throughout Australia and are very common in captivity. Bearded dragons are ectotherms, meaning they rely on the environment for their body heat because they don't make their own. They are very well adapted to handle different temperatures in captivity, though they just prefer around 90 degrees. They have a lot of special ways to control their body temperature in the hot or the cold. When bearded dragons get too hot, they often sit with their mouth gaping open, and this is to allow heat to dissipate from it. They also will burrow in dirt or sand, hide in the shade, or just find water to swim in. When bearded dragons get too cold, they have a lot of ways to help heat themselves up too. They can absorb the sun's rays, absorb heat off the ground, or rocks. What I think is the coolest way they can quickly heat themselves is by darkening their coloration, normally from a yellowish brown to a black, to attract more sun. Like all reptiles, bearded dragons don't have to keep a constant internal temperature. This is really beneficial to them because it saves them energy and lets them eat way less. That being said, getting too cold slows down their whole body, including heartbeat, breathing, and metabolism. Getting too cold eventually would result in death. Their anatomy helps them thermoregulate too. They have broad heads and backs to help them absorb the sun with the wider surface area. They also have fat stomachs they can flatten onto warm rocks to heat up faster. Some people call this pancaking. Lastly, this is my feedback diagram of what an ectotherm would do in a cold condition to thermoregulate. As you can see on the diagram, I have the stimulus as a temperature drop in the environment. The receptor is the blood, which gets cooled to indicate lower outside temperatures, and the integrator as a thermoregulation response in the brain. Boom. <laughs>